6.7 using the fundamental theorem of algebra. Um, the plus sign to this basically is that it's just like 6.5 and it's just like 6.6. .6. It's really more like 6.6 .6 using the um, rational um, factor theorem there. So it's the same idea, the same concept. What it's saying is the fundamental theorem of algebra is if f of x is a polynomial of degree n where n is greater than 0, meaning we're talking it has an exponent and the exponents are not negative and they are not 0, then the equation f of x equals 0 has at least one root in the set of complex numbers. So it has at least one root somewhere in the problem. Okay, so taking a look here. At example 2, this is what I meant by it being almost identical to the last section. Right here you take a look at this. You have x to the 5th minus 2x to the 4th plus 8x squared minus 13x plus 6. The problem is we have to set this up to do the work. We have 1 to the 5th uh, and to the 4th. We don't have a 3rd. We have a squared and x. So I'm going to look at, just like we did with the um, rational theorem from the last section, I look at the coefficient and I look to see what are all the numbers that are factors of 6. Well, 1, 2, 3, and 6. And I put all those over whatever the leading coefficient is, which is a 1. So it's just a 1. So basically, it is just 1 divided by 1, 2 divided by 1, 3 divided by 1, and 6 divided by 1. And they're all positive or negative. So really, I only have 2, 4, 6, 8 different numbers to choose from to see that go into this. So we have a 1x to the 5th, a negative 2x to the 4th, 0x to the 3rd, 8x squared, negative 13x, 6, it's regular old 6. And when I'm setting that up, I'm going to try by seeing if I can plug one of these in. So I have, like I said, 8 choices. I'm going to try out 1. So I bring down the 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Add them together to get negative 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Add them together to get negative 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Add them together to get 7. 7 times 1 is uh, 7. Add them together to get negative 6. Negative 6 times 1 is negative 6. Add them together to get 0. And because that's 0, hooray, 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 I know that 1 is a solution to the problem. So that means x equals 1. And that also means that this right here, since it started at x to the 5th, this is 1x to the 4th minus 1x cubed minus 1x squared plus 7x minus 6. Okay, great. I have to do this all over again. So that's what this is basically saying right here. What this is saying is, here is the 6. So what are all factors of 6? 1, 2, 3, and 6. Leading coefficient is 1, so 1, 1, 1, 1. And I have to redo this all over again. So on the next page. All right. Um, here was what we have, right? 1, negative 1, negative 1, 7, negative 6. So that's what we have here. 1, negative 1, negative 1, 7, negative 6. And I have to pick one of those again to try. Well, I already tried 1, so let's try 1 again. So I bring 1 down. 1 times 1 is 1. And you could have chose 6. You could have chose negative 6. You could have chose 3. You could have chose negative 3. But I chose 1 again to make this easier. So 1 times 1 is 1. I add them to get 0. 1 times 0 is 0, I add them to get negative 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1, I add them to get 6. 6 times 1 is 6, I add them to get 0. And 1 works again. The reason why 1 works again is just like in many different solutions that we have, sometimes you find out that some answers have the same answer twice in them. It's okay to have the same answer twice. So just because I used 1 the first time doesn't mean that 1 wasn't a solution again, which is why I used 1 here again for you. So what that means is x equals 1 from the first one, x equals 1 from the second one, and since we were at x to the fourth, this is 1x cubed, no x is squared, negative x, positive 6. I need to do this again. And when I do this one again, if you notice here, um, I take the last number, which is a 6. 1, 2, 3, and 6 are all the factors again. The coefficient is 1, so I divide them all by 1. So I pick another number to plug in to do this again. So this right here is what I'm going to be filling in. Right, so there it is. And I'm going to try out another number to see if it works. Well, this time I'm going to try to guess a negative 2. And once again, 
is just about guessing. If I find a remainder when I go through, then that's not an answer. So I used 1, I used 1, now I'm going to try negative 2. So I bring down a 1. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. I add them to get negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. I add them together to get positive 3. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. I add them together to get 0. Since this was x cubed, that means this is x squared. That is a negative 2x. That's a positive 3. So I knew from the first one that x equals 1. I knew from the second one that x equals 1. Now from the third one, I know that x equals negative 2. And now from this point on, I can use the quadratic formula or I can factor it to see if I can get an answer. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give me 3 that add to be negative 2. Well, there is any I can think of. So I have to use the quadratic formula. And if you remember the quadratic formula, it's negative e plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a, where this is 1 is a, negative 2 is b, and c is 3. So when I go to do this and plug it in, I put in, it's remember it's negative b, which is negative 2, negative 2 squared minus 4 times 1 is a, times 3 is c, all over 2 times 1. So when I plug that in, that's a 2 on the outside, that's 4, that's minus 12, all over 2. So that is uh, negative 8, which I take out the uh, root negative 1, and root negative 1, if you remember from chapter 5, that's a complex number, so that is i. Out in front, root 4 and root 2, out of that root 8, right? I changed root 8 into root 4 and root 2, and root 4 became 2. So I have 2i root 2 and a 2 outside, so I can divide each of those by 2, right? So I really have 1 plus or minus i root 2 as an answer. So I have x equals 1 as an answer right there from the first one. x equals 1 is another answer from the last one. x equals negative 2 from the third one. And this one I have two answers, 1 plus i root 2 and 1 minus i root 2. And like we said... Fundamental theorem of algebra, there should be at least one root answer, and there is actually two. So we have five answers for this problem. And when we come back here, I will continue with the fundamental theorem of algebra.